gotcha, bitch. Shazam! Boys. vision to build video if you happen to be new to the channel or you're just enjoying the content then please be sure to ground and pound that like and subscribe button also reach up there trickle the bell and turn on post notifications so that way you never miss a live stream or a video that is uploaded also don't forget to check out the links in the description tons of content down there so be sure to check it out also you'll find there is the full extensive gameplay for this build now i initially wasn't going to make any more builds for quite some time until some more content come out because the youtube sphere is just uh, saturated with no nonsense well i wouldn't say no nonsense some nonsense builds out there um just for the sake of actually uploading something and you know i didn't want to you know jump on that bandwagon you know and just you know throw crap together and sell you crap sandwiches uh just to you know some get clicks and views but it was asked uh, of me to actually do a build and showcase what i was actually using in these last two pvp videos that i had uploaded well i'm here to like, show it to you so i hope you guys enjoy and we'll go over the different variations and how you can tweak it to uh, fit your play style so according to my playstyle on how I like it, I am using the Survivalist, um, also the Weapons of Choice, uh, of course the Eagle Bear, 27k damage, and the Eagle Bear is still, I would say, the best AR in the game, just for the Tenacity perk, which is 40-80% to of damage taken is delayed until the buff expires. And of course the Eagle Strike, accuracy increases as you continuously fire up to 100%. Headshot kills grant 100% reload speed. 50% damage and the tenacity buff for 10 seconds. The strength of tenacity is increased by 1% for body shots and 5% for headshots. And of course, the protected fire. While holstered, gain at 10% bonus armor while firing your current weapon. So when I'm using my secondary weapon, which is a military P416 at 25k, um, I get an additional 10% armor, which definitely comes in handy. And of course, I am using Preservation. Um, I could use Ranger here, but you know, as far as damage drop off, I'm not gonna really benefit it from it that much. And as of late, if you haven't noticed in the Dark Zone, uh, pretty much it's everything is up close and personal, usually within that five meters. So I'm not gonna really get any benefit from it whatsoever, but I would benefit from a Preservation just by getting a kill, which is killing an enemy repairs 10% armor over five seconds. Headshot kills improve the repair, and since I'm using uh, more or less an eagle, and I try to more or less go for headshots, um, then if I actually you know kill somebody with my headshots uh, with my complete potato aim, then I will definitely uh, benefit from it more, in my opinion, than I would for the likes of Ranger. But it's whatever your personal preference are. And of course, uh, I'm using Allegro. Um, that's you know a given on pretty much any AR. And it's while holster gain 5% weapon handling, which is the overlapped, which also affects my primary. So all in all, it works out really, really well. But if you choose to run different ARs, I do have just a, the regular custom P416, as you can see with Ranger and protected deploy, but uh, it's 600 less than the military uh, P416 that I currently have. I still like the, the military because it's my, my go-to. I believe I have an M4, it's at 23.2, um, but I, I like this setup and it's what I'm familiar with and what I'm used to, and you know I pretty much like these uh, two weapons. Now as far as the sidearm, there's two different ones I would like to go to as far as the holster talent. That is the protected reload. So if I'm using the P416, Mary, or my secondary, then I'm getting the protected reload, which is I'm getting 10% bonus armor. So all in all, I'm getting 10% armor while I'm shooting it and 10% armor while I'm reloading it. And it actually synergizes really well. Now, if I run into a lot of people using stats effects, then I uh, switch to this sidearm, which has stop, drop, and roll. While equipped, rolling removes burning, bleed, and poison stats effects can occur once every 60 seconds. So if you're not 100% uh, immune to status effects, then stop, drop, and roll can come in clutch. So that way you can you know, put some other attribute in the, the case of you know, hazard protection, and then you just utilize this. Now let's hop into the build itself. Now I'm 
currently looking for a better True Patriot uh, holster. Um, right now I only have 478 skill power with 40,125 health. But um, I'm looking for one so that I can put the 735 skill power on it. And as you can see, my skill power will be at 1777. And the reason being is because I'm using the healer ball, the healer pokeball, whatever you want to call it. And of course, I have the plus 50% healing in one. And as you can see, I'm required to have 1678 to get that 55.8% but we can take it one step further and if i can get that uh, holster right then i can have this one at 62.4 percent which is with the uh, 59 55.9 percent it puts me right at 20k healing in pvp and then the 62.4 i believe puts me up to uh, around 22 23 so it, it works out really well and actually is better now in the gameplay video i was actually wasn't utilizing the healer ball i was utilizing the firefly because you know just blinding people just more or less trolling them so um and also i was utilizing the gunner but i got to thinking well i had this utility on my holster anyways and it was basically not doing me any good having just that minimum of 478 skill power so it was basically useless so i was just utilizing this holster because of the 40,125 uh, health so i put you know the mad scientist ha hat on and you know went to grinding and trying to find and put that you know actually to use and here we have it and of course it has two offensive mod slots and in both, I have 6.5% going to my AR for a total of 13% weapon damage. And of course, for having two-piece True Patriot, you get 10% uh, total armor. Now, the second piece is the True Patriot knee pads, 12% total armor. I do have um, uh, this particular pair that has 13.5%, and, um, and I could switch these knee pads out for Negotiator's Dilemma and then put True Patriot on the gloves but either way it's like i'm getting a utility um, mod slot which is i can still achieve that 17 but then it drops me below 400k armor i think it drops me down to like uh, 389 and i'd rather be a little more tanky so i'll just use it this way until i get that holster that i'm looking for but it has 12 percent total armor as the attribute and then it has a defensive and an offensive mod slot and the offensive i have another five and a half percent ar damage and then the defensive mod slot, I got 7285 armor, 2842 health, and then 1.5% total armor. Now, moving on to the two piece negotiator's dilemma. On the mass, 23,859 health, and then 515 skill power. And of course, it has a defensive mod slot, 5991 armor, 3% total armor, and then 2149 health. And two pieces of negotiator's dilemma gives you 30% explosive resistance. Now moving on to the second piece of the negotiator's dilemma. It is the gloves, 11% assault rifle damage, 219 skill power, and then it has a defensive mod slot, which is 2402 armor, 5% total armor, and then 1% health. Now you don't necessarily have to have them in these slots. It's when you're going with two, two, and then you only have two other slots, what would be the best two pieces other than what I'm running as far as the negotiators and the true patriot? And that is one piece of healer guard gives me 5% total armor. So if, for this particular build, and in my opinion, for having one piece, I'm getting the most bang for my buck by utilizing a healer guard. Because one piece not only gives you 5% total armor, but it has two mod slots in it as well. And on this particular backpack, I have 14 215 armor 11 percent total armor and i mean 11 percent weapon damage apologies and then 20,791 health with vital and i'm not utilizing any more or less secondary skill but if you actually have a backpack that you you know might would want to have spark on it uh and mix it up that way it's just that particular way is just played out uh and if i'm going to utilize two skills yes you can use a drone to proc spark or you can use grenades to you know uh, proc it as well uh things of that nature but this is more or less streamlined and easy peasy lemon squeezy uh the easiest i can more or less make it because as we all know i'm not the greatest at pvp but i can hold my own and i base it on more or less simplicity so that way you don't get lost in the sauce so to speak uh and when you know mixing and matching all these different talents and get too far carried away where you actually miss the core uh 
effectiveness of the build and that is more or less survivability which is your health armor your dps and as far as in this case a little hybrid action with actually some heals to uh help further your survivability and help sustain you uh in battles now moving on the two mod slots that i mentioned i have another six and a half percent weapon damage by offensive mod and then a defensive mod 6056 armor 2806 health and then two and a half percent total armor now moving on to the chest piece, since I'm utilizing ARs, this is actually the best in slot for this particular situation and this particular build because you're required, more or less, well I wouldn't say required, but in order to get that 10% weapon damage for having one uh, Fenris that goes directly to your AR and getting the most bang for your buck, and that would be the Fenris. Now I do have a couple of the Fenris backpacks. But as you can see, uh, they don't have any mod slots. And as far as stat wise, a lot of reds. Um, so your survivability is decreased. Now you can go with the likes of a Heligard chest piece that'll have two defensive and an offensive. But then again, uh, I think with the Heligard backpack, you're gonna get the, the most value out of it uh, over a Fenris, definitely. Because the Fenris uh, chest piece can have two talents versus if you had a Heligard here, yes, you would get uh, two more mod slots, but you would lose that secondary talent. And at least this way, you're able to have vital and of course, hardened on it. But talking about that chest piece, only six and a half percent weapon damage. Uh, so if I found one that had higher weapon damage, then that would further my DPS uh, greater than what it already is. And then we have 39,817 armor, 5% crit chance, and of course, Berserk, which is 8% weapon damage for every 20% of max armor depleted, and then hardened 15% armor. And then that offensive mod slot with another 6% LMG damage. Now one might think that by running a more uh, armor based over health in this case, um, that that would be counter counterintuitive of uh, berserk along with you know utilizing a lot of heals and sustainability by you know reinforcing your armor and healing your armor and repairing it. But with the current state of the meta and all things dark zone, it really you know works out you know best because I still have a healthy health pool which is 150.7k. So that way, if I do lose all my armor, I do get the full bang proc of Berserk, and I have a little sustainability when my health pool with that 150k health. So that way, I can survive and at least retreat or find cover. So that way, either I can you know drop a Kim or redeploy my um, my healer ball uh, in case you know it's on cooldown, so to speak. So that way, you know if it just leads a couple of seconds, then that allows me to retreat in order to use it. Uh, so that way I can refill my armor or just simply apply an armor kit. Also, by using the survival, uh, survivalist, uh, when you pop an armor kit, also your teammates can benefit from that if they're it within range. So it's actually a two-fold system, more or less. I have survivability, I'm getting heals, and I have tons and tons of DPS. Now let's go over that character sheet uh, now and look at our stats. Starting with the Eagle, the exact number is 26,952. Crit chance doesn't really matter here. 55% headshot damage. 5% weapon handling, that's from the overlapped. 25.5% all weapon damage and then a 59% assault rifle damage for a total of 84.5% damage. 29% uh, baked in damage to health that is found on the ARs. No explosive damage, 406, 591 armor, 150,730 health, 75,365 health regen, 15% protection from elites, 30% explosive resistance, 50% pulse resistance, and of course no hazard protection because I'm using that stop, drop, and roll. But let's say for instance if you just want to forego uh, any kind of additional skill power to increase you know, your heals. For instance, if you're happy with just what I have here, getting that 14,000 health, and you don't feel that you, you know, gonna benefit just from getting, you know, an additional, say that 60% healing, then you can easily switch instead of the skill power here and actually roll 50, 50 to 55% hazard protection to further help you out if you would rather go that route and just forego any kind of skill power whatsoever. So it just depends on your personal play style. But in my experience, you know, 
it is good, you know, not having to worry about having, you know, uh, stop, drop, and roll on your sidearm, especially if you can get it to 100%. But if you're only like, say, 50 or 75, then it doesn't really make that much a difference. You're still gonna be put on status effect. It's just not gonna last quite as long. So at least in this situation, with the heals that I have, I can quickly replenish whatever armor that, you know, um, is taken off for me by, you know, those status effects, whether it be bleed, burn, or explosive, but I do have that explosive resistance. So it all just more or less depends on your personal preference. And then by me using stop, drop, and roll, I feel that, you know, I don't necessarily need it for this particular build because I, I'm more or less backing that up and fortifying that stop, drop, and roll with the amount of heals that I have. Now, like I stated, if you want to, you know, switch these four pieces up any way you wanted to, if you wanted to go to True Patriot here and forego that defensive mod slot where the True Patriot has an offensive, and you can switch that out here as long as you can find one, you know, with uh, the skill power if you're going that route, and then switch to the knee pads of Negotiator's Dilemma. But the Negotiator's Dilemma does not, you'll lose that one red, but yet you gain it right back by switching out to the mask. But you would actually gain a, a utility mod that, as you can see on the screen, then that would put me over the 1691 that I need to get that additional 62% uh, healing for my healer ball but I don't have the pieces in order to switch them in and out to uh, get the effectiveness that I would want. Um, it's just a matter of trying to find the right ones. And I do have another True Patriot holster here that I can take off that 16% health and then um, apply the 735 skill power on here. And that's what I wanted to do, but good God, I went over to the crafting, well not the crafting bench, but the recalibration station or the rolling station, whatever you want to call it. And it was going to cost me 977 electronics and then uh, 19,000 funds just to re-roll this particular holster down here in order for me to put skill power on it. I guess I've just rolled it that many times and I didn't think it was worth it, so I'm been running you know air and space museum which is you know the designated spot and target of loot for the gear sets and i haven't been able to get a true patriot drop f worth anything uh been running it consistently all day but i'm going to continue to do it so that way i can perfect this build um but like i said if you want to forego the skill power you can put hazard protection on your mask and basically where you lose an offensive in one spot, you'll gain it in another. So it just depends on uh, basically what pieces you currently have or if you can get your hands on that you can fill these spots up to get the uh, required um, uh, pieces that you want as far as when it comes to your armor and health and as far as skill power. It's not really that easy trying to get a balance of all three and actually you know, getting enough of it to actually be effective. Now, if you have better pieces, your stats are going to reflect that, and you might have even uh, more armor in your armor pool. Um, like, if you can find a Fenris, if you'd rather go with uh, Bloodsucker, then you can also do that and just switch around some Legos, so that way you get that 11 defensive, and then you're good to go. But, you know, almost 2,000 skill power, and then only still having, you know, three utilities in the whole entire build, I think that's pretty diagon good. But I hope you guys enjoy it. Be sure to check out the gameplay in the description below. I appreciate all the love and support you're showing on the channel. Let's keep it going, Grilla Nation and Grilla Fam. And we'll see you guys fudging later.